Hi, welcome to the part two of this video on how to configure your Azure Active Directory Connect. So in the part one, we actually download the Azure Active Directory Connect from our Azure um, environment, and then we install it in the Windows Server. So mind you, this is not a domain controller because I'm, I install a different server entirely, which I'll be using to actually, uh, which I'll be using for the Azure Active Directory Connect. So what we need to do in this um, wizard, just select the I agree to the license and click continue. So because we are using actually this, this is a test environment and I have a, a domain domain name which I'm using right now, which is the private ICT list, which is not routable. So I'm going to select a customize instead of using the express settings. So here we are not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not using a um, SQL server. So if you're using an SQL server, you're working in a big uh, enterprise environment, you will need to select use an, um, an existing SQL server or specify custom installation location. For that, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to um, select the default what has been given to me and click um, install. So you can see it's installing virtual C++ 2013 and then from there we can continue the installation process. You can as well see that the Microsoft SQL Server Express local database is being installed, which is also required um, for this uh, for Azure Active Directory Connect as well. So right now we need to continue with the installation uh, with the configuration process of Azure Active Directory Connect. So here in the user's sign in, what we need to do is we need to select the password has synchronization, which gives us the op op opportunity to actually sync password both on from both on premises and also from the cloud. So if you want to know more about what the password has synchronization is, what you need to do is just click here. You see this option allows the user to sign in to the cloud using the same password that they use on prem. And here we need to enable the single sign-on as well. Here we will click these options, enable users on the corporate network to get a single sign-in experience, which is actually very cool. So click next. And here we need to enter our credentials, which we use to create, uh, which we are used to create our cloud um, Office 365 environment. So right now I have a domain name, which has been actually registered to my Office 365. So I'm going to actually enter my user's name enter Michael Johnson and my domain name is this a and then you enter your password and make sure that you have the global admin uh, right to actually configure this if this account does not have the global admin right probably you will not be you will not be able to go forward with this configuration so click next so it's connected to Microsoft Online to verify if your credentials is right and if the password is correct, and also if you have the right privilege to also configure this um, Azure AD Connect. So next, we need to connect um, our local directories. Actually, if not, you can see that you will not be able to click next. So what we need to do here, you can see it's Active Directory and it's our domain. We just have just one domain name with the forest domain. So here we need to click add. And here you can see it says if you enter your domain name and your password, which you're going to create a new Active Directory account. But let me just enter my domain name, less, and then enter my account name, and then enter the password, and click OK. So it's the um, it's been examined, and you can see that it has been the directory has been configured so now we need to click next and make sure that that account also have this uh, it's an enterprise um i also have the enterprise admin right if not you will not be you will not be able to configure it and you can see we have the my my domain name actually which is has been verified in azure active directory domain so in office 365 i've already verified my domain with office 365 which of course you can see here I have, it says the, the domain name has been verified. So just click next. And here we can see we have sync all domain and use that, but you can as well, if you have different domain, you can say select uh, sync selected domains. And But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at the default and click next. So here you say uniquely identifying your users. Users are represented only once across all directories. So I'm going to leave it at the default and click next. 
So it says synchronize all users and devices. So here I'm using a test environment. So if you are using, if you are working in an enterprise environment, you can decide to actually sync selected group. But for now, I'm going to sync all users and device. So click next. So here we have some other optional features which we can select. So we have the password hash which have already been selected. So we have the directory extension attribute as well, but I'm going to actually select the password right back. So when users actually change their password, it's going to write back to, um, to your on-premises or the other way around. So just click select it and click next. So here we need to enter a domain administrator account to be able to um, continue with this configuration. So enter, just click enter credentials and you'll be requested to enter your credentials. So let me just enter my credentials once more. This is a domain admin account and then click OK. So it's going to verify if that account is OK. You can see the green check says it's OK. So click Next. And right now it's checking for the installed component and it will be configured. But mind you, this is just the first step actually we need to do because we still need to configure a hybrid environment which will allow us to actually sync our devices to, uh, to on-premises and here we can say okay start the synchronization process when configuration complete so just click install so i'm going to pause this video and come back again with the next step of the configuration so here you can see that the configuration has been completed so it says azure added connect configuration succeeded and the synchronization process has been initiated so it said the configuration is complete you can now log into azure Office 365 portal to verify that your user's account from your local directory have been created. That's fine, so I just click exit. So, but mind you, to actually configure hybrid Azure as they join, which is not configured in this in this uh, initiation or the configuration we just did, so you need to do a different configuration. What we need to do is, so we need to start the Azure AD Connect again. So click yes. So right now, what we need to do is to configure the uh, hybrid Azure AD join. So if you have conf successfully configured and installed the Azure AD Connect, so you just double click on the Azure AD Connect from your desktop, from the, from the shortcut on your, um, on your desktop, and then it will bring you to this um, screen, which says, welcome to Azure AD Connect. So you need to click configure. Here in configure, we are actually interested in the configure device options. So it says use this task to configure device op uh, options. So uh, device registration. So just click your device, configure device options, and click next. And here it says uh, with those device management in Azure either you can ensure that users are accessing your resources from devices. So click next. So here I'm going to enter my password from my Office 365 admin credentials. So enter your the right password and click next. So it's connecting to Microsoft online to verify if your credentials are right or not. So here we're going to actually select the configure hybrid Azure AD join. So which means that if your device from your on-premises device can actually be joined to Azure Active Directory and as well we can actually configure a group policy which will join that device automatically to Microsoft Intune. So click select a configure hybrid Azure AD join and click next. And here we're going to say, okay, what devices do we want to support? So I'm going to, I'm going to select the Windows 10 or later domain joint devices, or you can as well select supported Windows down, down level. But I don't want to sell. I just only want to support Windows 10 because I know all my devices in my environment are Windows 10 operating system. So click next. So here I'm going to select just the, for the only forest I have, which is my domain name. And here I'm going to select Azure Active Directory. And here I'm going to enterprise, you need an enterprise um, login name or an enterprise account that you should be able to configure your SCP configuration. So you just click add here yeah, and enter the domain and you enter your domain name and then enter your password. So click OK. And you can see that the name is properly configured and the password is correct. So click Next. 
So here it says, once you click configure, we will do the following, configure the SAP for device registration in this domain name. So click configure. So it's going to verify with Azure Active Directory and just configure the necessary configuration. It says the task to configure hybrid Azure at the joint completed successfully. So right now, all your device will actually synchronize to your um, to Azure Active Directory, and also we should be able to actually configure a group policy, which can which we should make sure that every single device in our environment should be joined to Microsoft Intune automatically without the user or anyone doing that manual manually. So I just click S8. And also what we also need to do again, we need to actually force the synchronization between your Azure AD Connect on premises and also in the cloud. So I'm going to do that using PowerShell. So what we need to do, first of all, uh, let me just, we need to start PowerShell as an administrator. So let me just see more and then start to run as administrator. So after starting PowerShell as an administrator, so what we need to do is we need to enter, we need to just type the following command actually to actually sync the uh, Azure AD Connect from on-premises to the cloud. So you type the following start um, Azure AD sync, sync sync cycle, yes. And then we have to do a policy type. I think we have the option to actually do Delta, which is just to sync actually all changes that have been made or initial to just synchronize all everything um, that we have configured to the cloud. So right now, just click enter. So it's going to take some time. And please don't forget to actually start your PowerShell as an administrator. If not, you're going to receive an error message that you don't have the privilege to do that. You can see it says success. So it means it will take some time and after some like, I think 30, within within now and some 30 minutes or within now some minutes, all the sync, you should go to your Office 365 and should be able to see that Azure Active Directory is being synced with your, um, with your on-premises devices. So if I go to my um, um, Azure, to my, um, Azure um, AD portal in Office 365, here you can see I just, you have to go to Azure Active Directory and you go to Azure AD Connect. And here you can see that my status says that my Azure AD Connect is being synced, it's enabled, and the password hash also is being synced, so it's enabled, and it's less than one hour ago. So let me see if my user's account, which as you can see, that my account is being synced from Office 3, from my uh, on-premises domain. Here you can see, uh, let me see, directory synced, yes, yes. So this and this have been synced from my on-premises environment. And as well, if I go to my Office 365 Admin Center, you can see that under my accounts, my user's name as well is being synced as well. So my name is Kelvin Johnson. This is how you actually configure a hybrid um, Azure Active direct Directory. And also, how do you configure your Azure AD Connect in your on-premises environment to sync with Office 365 and Azure Active Directory? So please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for my IT-related video. And if you think this video has been of any help to you, please don't forget to hit the like button and also leave a comment or send me an email and I'll reply to you as quick as possible. I'm also going to leave my Instagram um, account link below so you can actually um, join me on Instagram for more IT related video and IT news. So thank you very much and hope to see you next time.